Hi, welcome to 5.2 about congruent polygons. Our objectives are to identify and use corresponding parts and use the third angles theorem. And our essential question that we want to be able to answer by the end of the lesson is, given two congruent triangles, how can you use rigid motions to map one triangle to the other triangle? Here are two terms defined for us, congruent figures, which is same size, shape, and angles of corresponding parts. And then corresponding parts, means that you're in the same position in two figures, so it is important to be aware of orientation of figures being compared. All right, our next vocabulary is congruent statements. We've seen these before. It's the statements that say two figures are congruent, so order is very important. Just keep in mind all your corresponding parts. There are six total, so angle A is congruent to angle X. Keep in mind to include your angle symbols. And when you refer to corresponding sides that are congruent, make sure you have your segment bar above the two letters. So there's a total of six because you have three sides and three angles that correspond and are congruent. All right, so let's analyze this biconditional statement. Two triangles are congruent if and only if their corresponding angles and sides are congruent. So if we look at the conditional statement, if triangle ABC is congruent to triangle XYZ, then all pairs of corresponding parts are congruent. If we switch that, which is the converse, if all the corresponding parts are congruent, then the two triangles are congruent. Therefore, our biconditional is true for the conditional and the converse. All right, so let's look at example one, where we will identify all the corresponding parts. Notice the two figures are not oriented in the same direction, so one strategy is to rotate allowing you to identify the corresponding parts a lot easier. So our congruency statements include comparing the two figures, so triangle JKL is congruent to triangle TSR. Then the three pairs of corresponding angles, angle J congruent to angle T, angle K is congruent to angle S, and angle L is congruent to angle R. Then the three pairs of corresponding sides, so side JK congruent to side TS, side KL congruent to side SR, and side LJ is congruent to RT. All right, now you try these. You can write these on the opposite page of your interactive notebook, page 27. Write the congruency statements for all corresponding parts, and we can check them in class. So pause your video and complete parts A, B, and C for practice. Alright, so let's move on to example two where we're going to use the properties of congruent figures in order to determine the values of x and y. So let's start by identifying congruent parts with marks on our figures. And we can do this by looking at our congruency statement. We have d in the first position and s in the first position, therefore they are congruent. And we do that for the rest of the letters as well to identify corresponding parts, including angles and sides. All right, so after you have your congruent marks for both the angles and the sides, it might make it easier to set up your equations and then ultimately solving for x and y. So let's go ahead and set up our equations. We can see that angle Q is 6x, uh, sorry, 6y plus x, and it corresponds to angle F. So we can say that 6y plus x equals 68. And then we see 2x minus 4 on the label of side qr. And it corresponds to gf, which is 12. So we can set up our second equation with those expressions and lengths. So next we want to see which equation to start with. So if I'm looking at the two equations, one of them, the 12 equals 2x minus 4, has one variable. The second equation, 68 equals 6y plus x, has two variables. I won't be able to solve for two unknowns in a single equation, so I must start with my single variable in this equation, the first equation. So next you want to add 4 to both sides and then ultimately divide by 2, giving us x equals 8. Now we can take that 8 and substitute it into the second equation and we have 68 equals 6y plus 8, subtract 8 from both sides and divide by 6. And we get y equals 10. So x equals 8 and y equals 10. All right, here we have our three 
properties of triangle congruence. And we know that the properties of congruence are true for segments and angles, and they're also true for triangles. So we've seen these three properties before, but now it's in the context of triangles. So the reflexive, congruent to itself, symmetric, you switch. So if one triangle is congruent to another, then that other is congruent to the first. Transitive, if one triangle is congruent to a second triangle, and that second triangle is congruent to a third triangle, then the first is congruent to the third. All right, so let's look at example three. We're gonna show that figures are congruent. So let's say you divide the wall into orange and blue sections along the segment JK. Will the sections of the wall be the same size and shape? So in other words, will figure A, J, K, D be congruent to figure C, K, J, B? And then let's explain. So, so this will be kind of like a paragraph proof. All right, to start, from the diagram, angle A is congruent to angle C, and angle D is congruent to angle B, because all right angles are congruent. Also, by the lines perpendicular to a transversal theorem, we can say that segment AB is parallel to DC. This is line 46 of your implied statements, where it says two lines perpendicular to the same line implies parallel lines. Then we can say that angle 1 is congruent to angle 4, and angle 2 is congruent to angle 3 by the alternate interior angles theorem. Your implied statement it says that if lines are parallel, this implies that alternate interior angles are congruent. Again, you must show in your proof that lines are parallel first before you can conclude alternate interior angles theorem. So all pairs of corresponding angles are congruent. Next we see, using the diagram, that segment AJ is congruent to CK, and KD is congruent to JB, and the property of congruence allows us to conclude that JK is congruent to KJ, again congruent to itself. So all pairs of corresponding sides are congruent. Because all corresponding parts are congruent, figure AJKD is congruent to figure CKJB. So we can conclude that these two shapes are the same size. Okay, let's talk about the third angle theorem. It states, if two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another triangle, then the third angles of the triangles are congruent. So our implied statement shortens that to say, two angles of first triangle congruent to two angles of second triangle implies third angles are congruent. So if we're given that angle A is congruent to angle X and angle B is congruent to angle Y, then we can conclude that the third angle, C, is congruent to the third angle, Z.
Alright, so let's take a look at example 4. We will be using the third angle's theorem to find the measure of angle BDC. If angle A is congruent to angle B, which we know by the markings, and angle BCD is congruent to angle ADC, then by the third angle theorem, we can conclude that angle ACD is congruent to angle BDC. And by the triangle sum theorem, we can conclude that the measure of angle ACD is equal to 180 degrees minus the two angles we know about, which are 45 and 30 degrees. So the measure of angle ACD equals 105 degrees. We also know that the measure of angle BDC is 105 degrees. So measure of angle BDC equals the measure of angle ACB, sorry, ACD, which is equal to 105 degrees by the definition of congruent angles. All right, then our final example, example five, is proving that triangles are congruent. So use the information in the figure to prove that triangle ACD is congruent to triangle CAB. So from the picture, we can conclude that we're given AD is congruent to CB because of the corresponding marks and DC is congruent to BA, also by corresponding marks. And then angle ACD is congruent to CAB because of matching corresponding marks. And angle CAD is congruent to ACB, also by marks. And we're trying to prove that triangle ACD is congruent to triangle CAB. So set up your proof. We'll do a two-column proof, just like it is in the book, but any style proof is acceptable. So it's always a good idea to just plan out your proof, just kind of get a visual for where you're going and a, what you need to do in order to prove uh, the statement. So our plan for the proof is at some point we're going to use the reflexive property of congruence to show that side AC is congruent to itself. So that's, again, always a popular reason and statement that we can put in our proofs, especially if the two shapes are sharing the same side. So this will be a really popular uh, reason and statement to put into our proofs. And then the second thing is we can use the third angles theorem to show that angle B is congruent to angle D. So if we have two angles corresponding, so if two angles of the first triangle are congruent to two angles of the second triangle, that will imply that the third angles are congruent. So we'll use that at some point as well. So always set up your proof with uh, two columns, statements on the left and reasons on the right, and start by always stating your givens. So we are going to start with the corresponding sides that are given, putting those as number one, statements, and given is your reason for number one. And then number two, we want to include that angle A, I'm sorry, A, side AC is congruent to itself, CA, and we can say uh, by the reason of reflexive property of congruence that this is true, the statement is true. Next we'll include our given angles, corresponding angles that are congruent, and your givens can be in separate statements, and you use them when you need them, and so, as you can see, our next set of given statements are later in the proof, and the order in which you state them does not matter. Next, we can conclude that angle B is congruent to angle D because of our third angle theorem, which states if two angles of first triangle are congruent to two angles of the second triangle, this implies that the third angles are congruent. So now we have all corresponding parts congruent. So our statement, final statement is that triangles ACD are congruent to triangle CAB. And our reason is that the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, which you can shorten down to CPCTC. And this concludes our lesson 5.2. You can go on about your business. Move along, move along.